बिस्मिल्लाहमान रहीम वेलकम टू द वीडियो बाय जी टी आई सी माई नेम इज आसिम अमजद इन प्रीवियस लैब सेशन वी हैव लर्न सो फार द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डिसप्लेसमेंट इन दिस लैब सेशन वी लर्न अबाउट स्ट्रेन इन द कैंटिलीवर बीम इन द स्टार्ट ऑफ वीडियो आई विल टेल यू अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्ट्रेन The formal definition of strain is these are the quantities that is used to describe how the material in a body is stretched or distorted or it can also be defined as these are the displacements of a point relative to its neighboring point let's consider a point a and its neighboring point b and c which are respectively along x axis and the y axis suppose that after deformation a b c displace to a new configuration a dash b dash and c dash please keep in mind that in the illustration we assume the deformation is infinite isly small under the small deformation assumption the normal strain in x axis and y axis can be defined respectively as e x is equal to a dash b dash minus ab over ab which is a dimensionless and strain for y axis is equal to a dash c dash minus ac over ac which is also a dimensionless quantity so the strain defined in these two equation actually represent the stretch at the point a in x direction and y direction respectively stretch are not the deformation mode there are other deformation modes like changes of angle from c a b to c dash a dash b dash and it can be defined as the shear strain in the x y plane so shear strain x y is equal to angle of c a b minus angle of c dash a dash b dash note that the normal strain are dimension lens while the shear strain as a unit of radian which is also regarded as dimensionless so in this illustration we actually consider the only 2d case so in general the stretching may also occur in the z direction and describe the stretching and shearing of material at a point using e that is the strain is equal to e x e y e z shear strain x y shear strain y z and shear strain z x so according to the definition as described before it does not explain why they are called the normal strain and shear strains to clarify this concept let's redefine the normal and shear strain using a different but equivalent way so first we translate and rotate the a dash b dash and c dash such that a dash coincide with a and a dash c dash align with a c now the vector b b dash decompose into two components b d and d b dash so the former is the normal component while the later is called the shear component so bd is the normal component as it is normal to the x phase and db dash is the parallel to the x phase that's why it is called the shear component so the normal strain and shear strain on the x phase are then defined respectively by dividing the components with the original length and the original length in this case is a b now note that under the assumption of small deformation the definition of 
E H is equal to B D over A B is same as E H is equal to A dash B dash minus A B over A B while the definition of shear strain H Y is equal to D B dash over A B is also same as shear strain of H Y is equal to angle of C A B minus angle of C dash A dash B dash. Also note that there are two subscripts in the shear strain. So the first substrip S is the phase where the shearing occurred, while the second subscript Y is the direction of the shearing. Similarly, we may translate and rotate A dash B dash C dash such that A dash concise with A and A dash B dash align with A B which is shown here and now the vector C C dash represent the displacement of a neighboring point C which is on Y axis. So this displacement C C dash can be decomposed into two components like C E and E C dash. So C E is the normal component while the E C dash is the shear component and the normal strain and the shear strain on the y axis is often defined by E y is equal to C E over A C and shear strain y x is equal to E C dash over A C. So please note that under the assumption of small deformation the definition of this equation is same as this while the definition of shear strain is also same as this equation. So we may conclude that shear strain of xy is equal to shear strain of yx that is the change of a right angle in xy plane. So in this lab session I will guide you the concepts of the strain components. Ok now launch the solidworks and open the file cantilever which was saved in lab section 2.1. In the first step of finding the strain of the elongation case, first click the elongation tab and then move to the result session and expand it and double click the strain 1 to activate it. Again double click the strain 1 value to edit its definition and under the display group change its option to E P X X X normal strain which is in the first option of this pull down menu and then simply click OK. You will see the strain component E X is the only non zero component in this pure elongation case. So the strain is uniform over the entire body except around the fist end and I will explain this concept in future video session. Now we are going to use the probe tool. For using the probe tool move to the strain 1 right click on it and click probe and after opening the probe result window click around here which is anywhere away from the face end. And now I will demonstrate how this strain value is calculated from equation. Remember that the strain value is 0 0.00023809. In your case, the result may deviate. Ok, now simply click the OK chatbots and now move to displacement one section and double click on it. After activating the displacement again double click on it to edit its definition and under its edit definition panel select UX as displacement and then simply click OK. And now again move to displacement one and right click on it and click probe. We are actually using 
this probe feature to obtain the displacement value at any two location that is aligned in the x direction. So here the coordinate of two location are first click this point and then click let's say this point. So the coordinate of these two points are 51.4 comma 10 comma 5 and the coordinate for the second point is 66.2 for x for y it is 10 and for z it is 5. Okay. And their displacement values are 0 0.012132 millimeter and for second point is 0 0.015672 millimeter respectively so your values may not be the same as here so don't worry about that all right now we are actually calculate the strain from displacement so for knowing the displacement at two neighboring location along the extraction and the coordinate of the two location the strain can be calculated using this simple equation that is Ex is equal to change in Ux over delta x. So simply we are now substitute the values. Okay, so let's type it here 0 0.015672 minus 0 0.012132 first type the second point and minus this point into the first point that is the change in dip displacement over the change in x value that is 66.2 minus 51.4 So the strain value is 0 0.00023989. So you can also verify this strain value previously drawn value under the strain section. Here you see 0 0.0032, which is consistent with the value and with negligible numerical deviation. Now note that for this pure elongation case, the strain is uniform over the entire body. Therefore, selecting any two location will have the same strain value as long as they are away from the fixed end and also aligned in X direction. Okay, now we are moving for finding the strain for the bending and elongation tab. First click the bending and elongation tab, then double click the strain 1 to activate it. Again double click it to edit its definition and select EPX e for the normal strain value and then turn off the deform shape checkboard if it is checked and then simply click OK. So this one is the point A and this one is the point B. Now follow the step to create the section view. For that move to the plot tools and click the section clipping. And under the selection clipping make sure here you select the front plane under section 2 made sure here top plane is selected and under section 3 made sure right plane is selected distance value should be 10 millimeter and made sure this reverse direction is checked for the case of section 3 and section 2 and then uncheck the show section plane checkbox and then simply click ok now use the probe tool to obtain the strain component values at the two location that is location A and location B. So first select the strain 1 or EX component value at location A and then 
annotation way so simply right click and click the probe tool and click this edge and this edge now you see the strain value at location a is 0.00005179 and at location b its value is 0.00024507 okay these are the two values for strain component for x direction now repeat the same step for finding the rest of the strain components that is ey ez shear strain xy shear strain yz and shear strain zs then you come up that only you found the shear strain value for xy direction and the rest of the values for the shear strain at location a and b would be zero and you found only shear strain value at location b simply right click probe but make sure here first select the shear strain component rather than the normal strain x normal strain so select this one click ok right click click probe and click this location b value and this location a value and here you found the value is 0 0.00008196 and here you found the value 0 0.00000017 that means it's nearly equal to 0 and the negative sign is actually showing the material is in compressed state and the positive value is show the material is in stretch state and we will explain this concept in future video lectures too and this is actually called the poison effect ok now let's find the strain value from displacement in that case move to the displacement section and double click on it and then you have to follow the step to create the section view for that move to the section clipping button under the plot tools and make sure the following options would be selected for section 1 make sure the front plane is selected for section 2 make sure the top plane is selected for section 3 make sure the right plane is selected at a distance of 10 millimeter and under the section 4 make sure the right plane is selected at the distance of 11 millimeter and under section 5 made sure the top plane is selected at the distance of 1 millimeter and make sure this reverse clipping button is checked for section 5 4 3 and 2 and also make sure the show section plane chat box is unchecked and then simply click ok and here you see a small cube and we call it at this point at location D this point at location B and this point at location C so after the section clipping method you see the result that of small cuboid that is 1 by 1 by 5 millimeter mean 1 by 1 by 5 millimeter is shape now we are again using the probe tool to find the displacement at location b at location c and at location d so move to the displacement one section right click on it and click the probe button and then click here then click here and here so you see the displacement for x direction component value at location b is 0 0.0022742 let's write it down here 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो टू टू सेवन फोर टू एट नोटेशन सी इट्स वैल्यू इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो टू फोर एट नाइन थ्री एंड एट नोटेशन डी इट्स वैल्यू इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो टू फाइव फाइव टू फोर All right. Now repeat the same step for finding the displacement for y direction at notation B, C, and D. So first change the display value from x to y displacement, and then simply click OK, right click, and select the probe tool, and again check these three notation B, C, and D. and now again note these values that is at location b the displacement for y direction is minus 0.002182 for displacement value at location c is minus 0.002528 and at notation d its value is minus 0.002418 all right now you see here the b dash d dash and c dash and these are the coordinate values that is derived from the table of the displacement for b c and d so b dash value is strung from here and b dash y component value is strung from this value similarly for the c dash x and y and d dash for x and y component values so now we are going to find the b dash c dash the length of this side and the length of b dash d dash how we can calculate it simply you have to minus the upper value to the lower value that is 1.0024 to 0.002274 and then the answer is 1.002151 this value is showing that the displacement that is occurred from this point to this point in the x direction and this value is shown the displacement for the y case that is 0.997758 minus minus 0.002168 then this value is showing the displacement for the y direction all right so how we can find the strain in the x direction simply substitute this value and minus 1 over 1 as we know that the length of this point to this point is one unit in the x direction and this point to this point is one unit for the y case so simply use this formula that is final change minus original over original value so according to that formula the strain value for x axis is 0.0002151 and for y direction is 0.000074 you can simply compare these values from the result that is derived before like move to the strain one section we are finding the displacement at notation b so that's why we are now again finding the strain at notation b value simply edit its definition and change its value to x normal strain and then use the probe tool to find the normal strain at notation b that is 0.0024 and here you also see the value 0.002 so minor difference in the fashion that can be acceptable all right now we are moving to finding the length of d dash c dash for actually finding the angle value so shear strain value or d dash c dash can be calculated for using the pythagorean theorem that is the square root of a square plus b square is equal to c 
so here we are first taking the x component value that is 1.002489 minus this point value whole square plus this value minus this value and the whole square then taking the square root of this whole term would be equal to 1.4143 so this one would be the length of d dash c dash now for finding the angle of d dash b dash c dash that can be calculated using the law of cosine this one is the formula for the law of cosine simply substitute all these term and rearrange this term then we will be able to find the angle in radian that is 1.57092 so first take the a pos mean pos inverse and then substitute all the term values a squared plus b square value and other combination of that values so the angle value would be 1.57092 and for finding the shear strain simply minus this term from pi by 2 or you can say 90 degree okay so this value is showing the shear strains value that is shown here mean the change in this direction so we can also verify this result value simply move to the strain 1 section edit its definition and change this display to shear strain value then click ok and again click the probe tools and click this location b and here you see the shear strain value is 0 0.000081 and something and here you see so there is a minor difference in fractions all right so this conclude our Gotcha. Thank you.